it does a lot, and uh, we are at the moment working uh, in, you know, for the government, for the Ministry of Commerce in, in this area. Telecoms, because a lot of the hikes are related to the telecom sort of set manufacturing sector. I talk a little bit about the services sector. And tax, because as you heard Rajin say that the tax to GDP ratio uh, it has declined and the GST has not been revenue neutral, and the economic survey does talk about naturally improve the tax to GDP ratio. I will say uh, something that I also said last year that I think it bears sort of repetition uh, that we need to reduce the compliance cost of paying taxes. Uh, and I think that would go along. I don't know how much that will add to GDP, but the tax to GDP ratio, but I think that would go a long way. So, trade telecoms and tax, the T's are just. Uh, happen to be a sort of a coincidence. So as I'm not going to read out the slides, the slides will be available on the website, uh, but I sort of give the main points in, in each of the slides, there's a lot of detail there. But the big picture is the five trillion dollar economy, which sometimes is a distraction, but the reason I've put it there is because the five trillion dollar economy is sort of, as the economic survey says, built on the back of at least two engines fired. One is the investment engine, and the other is the export engine. We've relied on consumption. Now we need to kickstart the investment. And we need huge amounts of investment to actually kickstart the cycle. And we need exports as well. Investment has fallen. And in, you know, there's no magic if you, if you read an article by Paul Krugman written in 1996 called uh, the myth of Asia's miracle, he says there's no magic to growth, you invest more, you'll grow more, given your incremental capital output ratio. If you invest 26% of your GDP and your incremental capital output ratio is 4, 4.5, you'll grow at 8, 8.5, 9%, and, and you'll get all the benefits that India got uh, during 2003 and 2008 of a fast growth 5 trillion there, not because we wanted to achieve it, but because uh, necessarily achieve the, the number, but we need to invest more and we need to grow our exports. And that's the focus, really, of what I'm going to say in the first part, is how, what, what is the background uh, in which uh, we are hoping to export. Remember, 2003, 2008, exports grew year on year 20% in dollar terms. So that was fairly you know, rapid growth. Now, international experience suggests that no country has been able to take off, you know, go from low middle income to middle income to high income without relying on exports, and for well-known reasons, apart from the fact that it makes you more competitive, it also enables transfer of technology and makes your domestic economy much more responsible, uh, responsive to international needs. So that's the reason we need to sort of uh, export as well, not sim simply rely on the domestic market, even though our domestic market would be very, is, is very high. If you look at exports, as I said, you know, I'm not going to read off the numbers, but if you look at you know, two key numbers, 2011-12 exports, 17% of GDP, today exports are down to roughly 12% of GDP. So there's been a big decline in exports as a percentage of GDP. Imports have also declined, but not so rapidly. Our current account balance is nudging towards 2.5%. If you break it up within country, I mean, obviously China is a big worry, and I'm happy to talk about this more in the Q&A, but we run about a $60 billion trade deficit with China, of which $40 billion is due to the electronic sector, where the customs duties have been hiked, and we're in the process of signing the RCEP. So I don't know how these are going to add up. Uh, are, are the customs duties high, making our economy, are going to make our economy more sort of protectionist? What does that mean for RCEP? Are we going to have a delayed track in our RCEP negotiations? Because RCEP, believe it or not, I guess is a FDA uh, huge kind of economic deficit. We are running, you know, interestingly, we run deficits with, uh, uh, we are running surpluses with the United States and, and, and European Union, but deficits uh, with East Asia. But the interesting story that has emerged in the past few months has been the US-China trade war. And Shekhar referred to this. And there's a lot of work going on both in Ikria and outside of Ikria and within the Department of Commerce as well, is can we benefit from the trade war between uh, China and, 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 and hundreds of companies, there are 50 on this slide, that are looking to exit China. And they're looking to go elsewhere. Uh, and India almost doesn't feature in this list except for a couple of, of 
companies like Sketchers and Pegatron and Apple. But most of the other companies are either going relocating to their home country or reshoring as has been called in the recent literature, or going to Thailand, or going to Vietnam, uh, or, or Mexico, or even Bangladesh. So we are not being able to take advantage, although the Prime Minister himself has said that this is an opportunity for India to attract these companies into the country, but we are not. And the question we ask is, and we are asked and continue to ask, as we said in research, is, is the net, if really you want to do this, if you want to become a participant in the global value chain, is increasing customs duty every year, I'm going to show you the numbers from 2016 onwards, Every year, customs duties have been increased. So two questions, is that the right way? And two, what sort of an effect have those increases in customs duties had on your domestic manufacturing? Because the hypothesis is that if you increase customs duty, you're going to promote domestic manufacturing and promote domestic jobs. So what has been sort of the success rate on that happening uh, versus you know, what is the impact on competitive? So we, we try and answer those, but I think it's early days to answer those questions, but that's really the question that we wish to answer. Um, if, if you look at some of the research that has, has done in the past and other institutions have also done, is that we've learned that you know, a tariff, an import tariff, is an export tax. And whatever channel of transmission you want uh, to use, whether it's the appreciation of the rupee, whether it's the increase in the cost of production, etc. But an import tax becomes an export tax as well, or import tariff becomes an export tax. And what, what's happened post sort of 1991 is the import content of our exports has been rising, uh, and that's also obviously been a secular increase. It's risen from 13% to 27%, for which data is available, and you see that it's risen more for electronics and machinery and less for food products and textile. And that seems to be logical. And for services, if you do the same analysis of services, you will see in services as well, the import content has risen, but not so much. So the backward linkages are important to export. And when you have a customs duty or a basic customs duty increase, or you have a customs duty increase, then obviously that's going to be a, a, a tax on your competitiveness of your export. So these. So, so what's, what have the budgets been doing uh, in this? So there's a policy, etc. I'm not going to, as I said, uh, go through the details of all the policy. I just want to sort of look at the budget documents since 2016, 17, 18, and this year, 19. And you see that there was an inverted duty structure which has been corrected in, in electric, electronics and uh, electrical manufacturing. But what's happened is that the duties have been increased, the customs duties have been increased every year, 16, 17, 18, and in this budget as well. And there are you know, different products. If you go down to the six and eight digit level, you will see that there are different products that have been increased. And the reason has been really, it's not to do so much with customs revenue, it's to do with how much increased domestic production can you have, and of course, how many more jobs can you create? And that's been the sort of, I, I think, the rise and the of those uh, custom duty increases. And in this budget as well, there's been an increase in, in duty rates, and the items are on the left-hand side. I'm not going to read, read them. I mean, for, for promoting Made in India, you've got, uh, let's say, uh, charger power adapter of CCTV cameras, uh, from zero duty, it's been increased to 15% for loudspeakers, for digital video recorder, etc. There's for optical fiber, and I'm reading out optical fiber because I have a sort of comment to make on that with respect to Bharat Net. So for optical fiber, there's been a duty increase from 10 to 15 So in a secular sense, from 16 uh, onwards, there's been, in all the four budgets that I've talked about, there's been an increase in duties of different items in the electronic system design manufacturing sector. Uh, and there have been, sort of, there have been impacts. Obviously, there will be impacts. Domestic manufacturing has increased. There have been positive impacts and there's been negative impacts. And I leave it for you to decide uh, whether the positive is, is better than greater than the negative, or the negative is higher than the positive. But on the positive side, you know, we had a huge current account deficit, or a trade deficit of, uh, in the last two decades 
on, on electronic imports, which will create $55 billion every year. And most of it from China. As I said, 40 billion of this was from, from China. And this is the second largest import item on India's, in India's import basket. So those of you who think of data as the new oil, well, uh, this is, is really, after oil, this is our largest import bill. Uh, in electronics. So the, the impact of all of this has been that you know completely uh, built units, the import of those have been reduced. So we've begun to assemble a little more. Uh, and they're down, they're now down to about 10% and they were very high, they were over 75% of them used to be imported directly uh, as completely built units and now the import is only 10% of the time. A lot of assembly is happening in India. And if you look at the history of, of China, uh, when they began to do this, they, they started the same way. They imported, assembled, there was very low value add in China, less than 6%. If you look at the famous OECD document with the smile, smiley curve, which they had, they saw that China was really the manufacturing factory of the world, but the value add that was happening in China was very, very limited. Most of the uh, sort of value add was going to the country which was designing and to the artisan service and the chip manufacturers. And the chip manufacturer is an important uh, component of this budget. I think embedded in one of the paragraphs of the budget is that we should start sending a number of fab manufacturers in India and have something to say about that. So the impact of all of this on domestic manufacturing of electronics has been that it's grown from, you know, if you read, you can't read the numbers, it's grown from very low amount, but it hasn't reached very high amount. It's about 10 to 15 percent, and the aspiration is to go to 32 percent. I mean, that's in 2020. The aspiration is to go to 30 percent. And if you want to increase domestic value beyond 30 percent, I think the only way to do it is to get semiconductor fabrication units within the country. This was something that was said in 2010. Two, you know, consortia had expressed interest. None of that happened. The finance minister has again said this in the budget, and it's embedded as if in that budget speech, the long budget speech, embedded somewhere. But I think this is something that we need to kick off. If because a fabrication unit will have several backward and forward linkages. In fact, one estimate suggests that if you have a fab unit within the country, then the impact on GDP over a period of time is 23 times that value. And those fab units are exiting China and going to Vietnam. So Vietnam has been able to attract that, and we should be able to attract that. And the point really is, if you're going to increase customs duties over a period of time to encourage domestic manufacturing, what impact will it have on, on companies that want to relocate to India? This is what I said about the... Uh, so has it been... Six, so the, the, the positive side of the increase in duties has been the increase in local value content uh, in, in, in mobile phones and, and tablets and computers and computer peripherals. But a big ticket you know, entry that had come into India in July 2018 uh, has decided that it is not going to expand as rapidly as it wished to because of the duties that are proposed to be introduced on, on touch panels which they feel is not competitive in India, and that if they were to import it at the current duty rates, then their production would not be competitive. They've stalled uh, sort of production of, of those high-end mobile phones that you touch panels, which uh, currently are not produced in India. So, so this is you know, an example of what I said would be the, the, the negative impact of the increase in customs duties. It would disincentivize people to locate here, for the purpose not only of serving the domestic market, but also using India as an export base. So while there is sort of at the lower level, there's an increase in the local content, at the higher level, uh, there is stalling of the progress uh, towards competitiveness that India wishes to make in this area. So if you really want to be a part of the global value chains that uh, Shekhar had begun to talk about, then the question is, what's the best way for India to, to do that? Whether, you, whether increasing customs duties year over year are the right way to address that objective, or whether there are other ways. And obviously, we know what the other way, you know, land, labor, uh, you know, faci trade facilitation is an important aspect. And I think that bears sort of uh, repetition 
that, for instance, the time taken for border compliance with imports in India is more than five times that in Taiwan. And, and, and these are all studies that I'm quoting. This is not something that we're pulling out of hand. These are all studies that exist, either done by the World Bank or some other institution. Uh, but these are based on, on evidence. And so if trade facilitation uh, is going to increase uh, the cost of doing business, then it's unlikely that India would become competitive in this area. So that's the, the sort of first broad story or the narrative that I wanted to paint, uh, which is that custom duties have been increased, domestic content in electronics has increased, India is a center where design does take place, so that's a positive view. A lot of multinationals locate their design facilities in Bangalore, so there's a lot of uh, Bangalore and Hyderabad, so there's a lot of design that is taking place in India. On the negative side is that if you want to become a part of the global value chain where products are going back and forth between countries and your trade facilitation is poor and your customs duties are high, the incentive to make India the location